I'm Terry Orwell, and this is a quick unboxing and look through of the Illusory Tarot by Svetlana, otherwise known as Jispar, Jispar. So this has was released in 2014. It's available from Etsy or uh, Amazon. The Amazon link being significantly cheaper, so I will link that below. Just sort of remind me of the Bonefire Tarot a little bit. It's got that little that bonfire tarot feel. So again, this has been around for quite some time. You can see other reviews and unboxings all over the internet. But this is mine. This is mine. So in case you, you know, you just want to watch my unboxing, here you go. It comes in a standard tuck box. And let's see what is inside. Here we go. So, obviously, here is the back. There you go. Not very reversible, but uh, still pretty cute. Still pretty cute. Definitely looks like a uh, an original art type of thing. Also comes in, uh, let's see, two of cups, three of cups. All right, the chariot. There we go. Comes in in an unusual order. Let me reorder it, and I'll be back. All right, here we go with the Fool. By the way, this is the card stock, about how thick it is. Not too bad. Not super thick, but not too bad. It's nice and sort of has that gloss on it as well. So there you go. All right. The Fool. The Fool. That's sort of an interesting take on it. Not really sure how to handle that. So we know we're going somewhere unknown. But it almost looks like that we're taking a bit of an attitude, or we're taking a bit of fun, or something's happening. Something's happening. All sorts of different moods sort of happening within that realm of the Fool. I think that's sort of interesting. The Magician as well looks more of a carnival magician. Um, got the balls, I guess sort of the juggling feel. Existence. So we do have the Existence. Uh, High Priestess Inner Voice. Pretty good. With the knowledge, the inner voice, the uh, feel of the high priestess. Uh, Empress creativity. So that is sort of an interesting take on that. All right. So we have like the flowering. It is budding. It is uh, growing. It is opened up into the empress creativity. The emperor. So we had a magnifying glass looking at something. Looking at something. It looks like the sun and the moon. And some influences within that. Hierophant. Okay. Let's see. The lovers. I like this one. Get the masks. We got the COVID masks. There you go. We got the masks. Uh, choice. Hmm. The lovers. Sort of interesting about choice. The heart is upside down as well. I like that. Could be something wrong within the love. Could be some challenges coming in. The chariot. Um, 30, not sure where the 30 is, but the chariot, there we go, got the couple of fists and the lightning feel for that, strength with the uh, lemuscate or the infinity sign, I guess, not an 8, most likely not an 8, more like the lemuscate, now that is interesting, the, the teeth are surrounding the masks, it's like we're being bitten, but it's not hurting, it's not injuring, it's not hurting, but we are being bitten by strength, with the infinity, the hermit searching. I'm not sure searching for what, but that's interesting, especially the tension sort of raised with all the arrows sort of coming into the space, the hermit space. So not only is he alone, he has tension because we have almost attacks coming into that personal space of the hermit. The wheel of fortune is interesting as well. So there we go, the Wheel of Fortune, things go round and round and come back around. Justice bringing balance into that. Looking for something that looks like a scale, but I'm not seeing it. Okay, I guess it, it brings in things into balance. The Hanged Man, new vision, or a different vision. Instead of the glowing light coming out of the head, we just have the trickles of things coming out. Uh, transformations, pretty obvious what that is. Um, let's see, art, there you go, art, the temperance. Um, walking on a tightrope kind of feel with the arrows, meaning that walking on this may be a little bit more dangerous than we expect. Maybe they don't have the 
things that they need to do that correctly. The devil, not really sure what's going on there. The spikes in the hands are interesting. Very interesting indeed. Break or the tower. So not only the tower collapsing, but we have a definite direction. Or it's almost like we're moving into a new space or a better space because of the collapse. The star hope. Instead of being guided, uh, I guess, there we go, past lives, the moon, and uh, cycles, the moon cycles here, and the past lives there. The sun innocence, very cool, I like it, it's got this sun shiny type feel. By the way, we have a 4K flip through of this coming soon. And resurrection or judgment, we go, the cocoon has blossomed into a butterfly so that's kind of where we want to go that's where we want to be that's exactly where we want to be now the world infinite possibilities all sorts of things working out now the ace of wands source comes in here possibilities the two of wands instead of domain we have possibilities so there you go so that's sort of looking out amongst the things that we own looking out amongst things that we are proud of with the domain feel we have it sort of reproduced into the possibilities virtue the correct three of wands thing there so there you go three of wands virtue looking out amongst what we're going to do next the four of wands completion there you go the lord of completion the uh holding hands the traditional marriage or home card with the four of wands strife the lord of strife conflict the five of wands we only have one person, but they're holding a flower and something else. So that's kind of interesting. The Lord of Victory, the Six of Wands. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of curious about that. Kind of curious about the victory here. They're holding the wand, but it's, their hand is bleeding. That's interesting. I would expect to see something like that with the Three of Swords, not the Six of Wands. The Lord of Victory, I'm not sure where the blood is coming from or what kind of theme we're looking at with the blood valor. So if these are going to be the standard meaning, what happened here? If these are going to be the standard meanings, which I'm cool with, I'm cool with, what happened with domain? What happened with domain? Um, uh, possibilities. I mean, okay. All right. I mean, that's interesting. That is interesting indeed. Let me pause for a minute. I mean, if we want to go with valor, strength, swiftness, victory, and all that, I'm just kind of curious what happened to the um, what virtue, strife, what happened to dominion, the two of wands, and how did it become, and how did it become possibilities? I'm sort of wondering if that's on purpose or was that a mistake? I'm kind of curious now. But okay, well we'll ride with it. We'll ride with it. We got the traditional swiftness card here with a lot of action, a lot of movement. Valor of the Seven of Wands. It's kind of cool as well. The Nine of Wands, Strength. Again, possibilities. I'm just not sure what happened there. So, Strength. Uh, oppression. The Ten of Wands, where we have the difficult difficulty trying to get everything available there. Capabilities. The Page of Wands. Something breaking between their hand. Or is that a cigarette? I'm kind of curious. Look like something between their hand is breaking. Maybe one of their fingers or something they're holding. I'm not sure what's going on there. But it is interesting for sure. The Knight of Wands, intensity. Intensity indeed. Uh, very intense Knight of Wands. Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands does not have a keyword, but the Queen of Wands has that definitive power. She is the CEO. And the King of Wands, the creator. The sort of the birthplace, the birth. Uh, card of many things as well. Consciousness for the Ace of Swords. I like it. I like it. Um, I mean, you know, Ace of Swords. I mean, there we go. There we go. Sure. So we got, um, uh, what is it? Okay. Uh, Libra with Gemini. I mean, okay. Sure. Decision. The Two of Swords. Taking a decision. Figuring things out. Trying to mask what is happening there. Um, contrast of the Three of Swords, that is the, you know, that's the Heartbreak card. The Heartbreak card, we normally would want to see some blood like we saw with the other card. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but the contrast, I like it. I like it. It is contrasty indeed. Postponement. 
The Four of Swords. How long can we delay what we're currently looking into, or how long can we move that back in order to get more time or buy us more time? The Five of Swords, the Lord of Defeat. Everyone knows the Lord of Defeat. You, uh, you end up encountering this many, many times in your life. Discovery, the Six of Swords, trying to get through some things, trying to move from a place that is not good to a better place. Seven of Swords is a trick, is a trick. We have a, a swap. So the Seven of Swords, we have misconstrued our intentions, maybe on purpose, and in turn, we are leaving barriers with the Eight of Swords. I like this card. We're sort of mushing in the area and trapping all of the various things within there so we can't get out. Sorrow, traditional Nine of Swords there. And Ruin, traditional Ten of Swords as well. I like that. I like that. Not as pretty as the Thoth, obviously, but I like the feel. It definitely has that ruined feel. Things are just going poorly. The Page of Swords, the Spy, we have it with Conflict. Uh, fighting, the Knight of Swords, also a very rapid movement card if you're interested. And Intelligence, the Queen of Swords, Corella de Ville. The Queen of Swords, trying to figure out the intelligence piece from that. The King of Swords, the Dictator, the Overlord feel, the control, really brings that together. So you do have that control feel with the King of Swords. Very much a controlling card, very much a you're trying to micromanage at the same time as being a bit of a, a bit of a totalitarian there. The Ace of Cups, having a gift and having an opportunity. I like this. I like that. And love, the traditional Two of Cups, bringing two entities together. We see that here with Venus in Cancer. I like that, that some cards do have the astrological associations in there. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe all of them do, and I'm just not seeing it. For example, Celebration, um, maybe it's there and just hidden very well. But anyway, but yeah, Celebration. Having a good time with your friends. The Three of Cups also points to maybe a third party being involved in your love relationship, which sometimes happens. Four of Cups. Yeah, turning in the Four of Cups. The Lord of, um, the Lord of Blended Pleasure. Lord of Blended Pleasure. I like the mask theme that we do have here. All right, and the Five of Cups, Disappointment. A dreamy Six of Cups, where we have the gift to the smaller person. So here is the smaller person's hand. Here is the larger person's hand, giving the gift of love, getting that connection in. Very important for that connection to be there. Projections. The Seven of Cups, the Lord of Illusionary Success. So we go. Rename to Projections. We have all sorts of interesting things going on there. I like that. That's cute. Letting go, the ace, the ace, the eight of cups, the eight of cups. I think that's pretty cool. Get the astrological associations on there in case you're interested in the eight of cups. Abandoning what we know and going elsewhere. So we have the heart sort of leaving and we have something else coming in instead. Looks like we have a heart replacement almost. Happiness, the nine of cups and the ten of cups. The harmony and all sorts of good stuff there as well. So pretty good theme here. Pretty good theme. And the page of cups, that is the a bit of the introvert. Sort of see a bit of the introvert, the understanding, being able to do all of that stuff. Knight of Cups, trust. Mr. Romance, Mr. Don Juan himself being the trusting card. Receptivity, the Queen of Cups being water within water. She is very receptive indeed. I like that. I like the uh, feel for that card. And the King of Cups. Healing. Sort of that, um, you know, a bit of that passi passi passivity. Is that a word? Passivity being passive. The passivity of healing and the King of Cups. Here we go for the Ace of Pentacles. New beginning, new earthly beginning. Pretty cool. And Two of Pentacles. Changes indeed. Changes indeed. We have different opportunities, different things coming. We have a balance coming out of that stuff. Three of Pentacles, working hard. Work, it is work. A little smiley face, I like it. 
I like it. Work looks pretty good. And it also has a bit of that Leo feel as the Three of Pentacles is showing off your work as well. Miserly Four of Pentacles. Holding everything on one side of the wall and not allowing it to get on the next side of the wall. There we go. Also earning extra. Trying to earn more. Not only having and not sharing, but trying to earn more as well. The Five of Pentacles. Worry. We have that represented here quite well. Success of the Six of Pentacles looks good. Giving, that hand giving, leading off and allowing the Pentacles to drip off into other people's hands. Seven of Pentacles, I like this. I like this. Has that planting feel, but it is sort of missing the, uh, the plants. Missing the plants, I guess we have a shell instead. Prudence, Eight of Pentacles, and Gain, Nine of Pentacles having plenty of it. I guess the Superman, Superwoman in this case possibly, the Nine of Pentacles, and looking into Wealth of the Ten of Pentacles, where we have one of everything. We have the family, we have the good news, we have the dog, we have the cat, we have the uh, house, we have the successful job, we have the money, we have the grandpa, we have everything. Page. Uh, Pentacles, the rock within the rock, the literal rock Dwayne Johnson adventure. Um, uh, the, I'm not really sure about the Page of Pentacles being adventure, but sure, adventure. Not of Pentacles, meditation, very much so. Flowering Queen of Pentacles with all of the opportunities within that and abundance, the King of Pentacles. So there you go. I like overall... The feel, I like the theme um, of the illusory tarot. Again, it sort of reminds me of Bonefire. Uh, Bonefire tarot. It does sort of remind me of Bonefire tarot. I think Bonefire has a bit of a different look to it. I mean, a lot of a different look to it. So Bonefire um, has a lot of defined symbolism as well. So like Bonefire, you have buildings, a skull... We have a rose, we have text, uh, we have another rose, we have wings. And some of the objects in here are sort of unknown objects. I mean, obviously, we have fire coming out of here. This could be a metallic crab or whatnot. I also think the hands are maybe a bit overrepresented. I like the smiling face addition. Some of the keywords are interesting. Um, I, but some of these I agree with, some of these I don't, but that's just personal preference for me, though. But overall, I like the Illusory Tarot. Again, published, I believe, in 2014, available on Amazon. Link in the description if you're interested in this deck, and we will have a 4K flip through coming tomorrow. Well, thank you for joining me for just sort of a quick rundown and flip through. I know someone's going to complain on the video that I didn't go slow enough, but that's what the 4K flip through is for. That's what it's for. So come back and join me then. And thank you for watching the unboxing and sort of quick look. And see you next time.